Shabbat Shalom, everyone. We are gathered today on the 14th of the third month on our Creator's calendar as we comprehend it, which happens to line up with the 25th of May, 2024, on the Gregorian calendar. And we're continuing with our reading of Bereshit, or Genesis. And continue with our, sorry, our reading of Jer Genesis 39, or Bereshit, where we now have Yahusuf in captivity in the land of Egypt, or Mitzrayim, and what happens to him there. Just for context, a lot of the words, like we use Egypt today, but at the time, especially when it was founded, um, and in its antiquity, it was known as Mitzrayim or Mizrim, right? Now, there's a twofold thing for that. It's the literal meaning, or it's the literal name of the, the son of Ham who founded it. But the literal meaning of his name was the confiner of the waters, which is alluded to in the foretellings about Pharaoh and the one who made the river Nile and claims it as his own, right? But it's elaborated on by Alexander Hislop in his book, The Two Babylons, where he goes over the etymology of the name and how it was the son of Ham who literally took the floodplain of Egypt, the land that was known, or it was a floodplain at the time, because the Nile was not constrained, and he built the, the borders of it, if you will. So he literally built the river and made it an, an, irrig an irrigation channel all the way to the delta there, and that allowed it to be inhabited in the dry areas, which was not possible before. Just for a little bit of history there. But it was called Egypt afterwards, and that was by the children some of the Hebrews there, the sons of Zerah, right, contesting with one another, one of them ran from the other, and it was Egyptus was the name. You had the A-E, how they normally had that, uh, like Irenaeus, and they put that A-E together, um, but that was eventually dropped. So just like the Nile was originally a different name, and Nile came from one of the Hebrew heroes, that's been carried on to this day in the name O'Neill among the Irish, for example. But that's for another time. For now, though, we're continuing with our story or our narrative here, and we have Yahusuf um, being taken down. It says, and Yahusuf had been taken down, right? And that's Ha Urad or Hurad, they say, right? To be Yarod, or like Jared, is he will come down. So Hurad is, had been taken down, or he was down, right, to Egypt. And bought him, that word kana is to take hold of, to grab or possess, to buy, right? When it says, buy the truth and do not sell it, wisdom and discipline and comprehension in the Proverbs, that's that word kana there. If you have an aleph at the end, Kof, Nun, Aleph, that's the Kana, but it means jealousy. So same sound, different spelling, different meaning. This is, and he brought him, or bought him, Pontifar, an officer of Pharaoh, prince, or captain, as they have it translated, right? The Shar Shalom is the prince of peace, if you will. But he's a prince of the guard, a man, an Egyptian, from the Yishmaelim, who had taken him down there. All right. So Pontifar bought the man from the or the Egyptian man, or from the Ishmaelites. Right. It says, and was Yahuwah with Yahusuf. Literally, and it came to be, or and it existed. Yahuwah eth Yahusuf. He was with Aleph Tal Yahusuf. And 
he was, right? And he caused to be the man successful. That's that's zelach, zelach, and that means to rush. They have it as prosperous here, successful, okay, successful, but it literally means to rush, to advance or penetrate. So it's more like he was, he was just made whatever he went to do, and boom, it happened, and it happened greatly. He was very prosperous in the things that he put his hand to because he served his maker in truth okay you'll see it more in the testament of yahusif when we get to that but it was because of his willing disposition of not wanting to do evil and that he was overcoming these things in the 10 trials that came upon him just as abraham overcame in the 10 trials that came upon him just as Jacob overcame the ten trials that came upon him, the patterns of the forefathers, because of that, he was exalted to the position that he was given. And it was so foreordained because of what would happen later on in his children, also riding on the wings of this um, birthright uh, covenant blessings that he inherited, if you will. It says, and it came to be, or and it existed in the house of his master, the Egyptian, and saw, or Andy saw his master that Yahuwah was with him. And all which, or all that, Asher, just this word by itself, Aleph, Sheen, Resh, right? Or it's this way, Aleph. Sheen, Resh, Asher means that which who, right? When you put the Yod at the end, that's the one that means happy is the man, happiness, blessed. See, it's also happiness here. But Ashray, right, is usually where they get the word for, um, this one also means step or going. If you remember, it's to be confirmed or authenticated, strengthened in the way which you go. And it's the who or that which who would be happy or blessed. Oh, I don't know if I'll be able to find it conveniently. Sorry about that. Anyways, we, we've gone over it before, but if you add the yod at the end, that's the word ashray, which has so much beautiful meaning to it. However, just as this asher, it means that who or which it's a pointer of something right it says in all that he did or, or the deed asay when you have the book of acts it's ma asay or ma asa right but anyways in all which he did yahuwah made to prosper he rushed it or accelerated it caused it to boom, penetrate right in his hand and so or and he found Wayamats or Wayimsa, right? Yahusuf, Chen, favor in the eyes of his master, or in the in his eyes, right? And he served to minister Sarat, Sarat, right? To minister or serve, to attend. So, and he ministered to him, or sorry, and he served at him and made him overseer. Remember, that's the word pe kof dalit. That pakad is the word for overseer. And then when you have the hey at the end, that's the word for visitation. We talked about that with the two ruach oath and how that word is used in the times of his visitation, and how these this word right here, this was the word that was used for the judges that were put over the people in the different cities, or their synagogues, if you will. So it was an overseer who was supposed to warn or exhort the people about the visitations of the Most High. But he said, and he made him overseer, Al, over 
his house and all yes yes this is where we get the word yes but it says all that he had right it's literally an all substance or all existence right all his all the all that is his right it's literally the thing that it is it's yes <laughs> is it real yes right that's the what yes became an affirmative to us but in the original it, it meant substance right and then can which became can was yes literally in hebrew but it became thus surely truly it, yes he can in the english there very similar but not quite the same you can see that phenomenon with words even in the english language if you just look at the um webster's 1828 dictionary look at the word for obscurity or uh, oblivious and then see what it is today there's tons of words like that where the meaning changes over time that's what's called a living language for anyone that's not familiar with the usage of that a dead language like latin or what a hebrew used to be the biblical hebrew is a dead language for a long time modern hebrew is a revived version of it and even since it's being rebirthed in creation that um that language has changed just like every living language changes a little as time goes on it's just a phenomenon that we are living through if you pay attention to the reasons for things his language being changed in the mouths of a man first started with idolatry and the second time it happened was because of idolatry and the reason why it was taken from the mouths of his children was predominantly because of also idolatry foretold to happen and also foretold to be restored so um i can't say that every instance of that is because of idolatry but when you think about what men were given of the truth how we have treated one another in contradiction to that and how the languages we speak have changed and suffered the same kind of violence you'll see parallels that are very astounding for anyone interested in that in regards to the english language and how it from the hebrew has changed and the history behind it i highly recommend the two volume set of the 1886 webster's dictionary you can still find it or you could find it um, a while ago on the um, archive.org on the internet but it should be available online in there in volume one it has a history of the english language and from its inception and how it came down to us from the gothic and whatnot it doesn't trace it all the way from the hebrew but from the germans in dispersion that we know of the history of the identity of the germans being hebrews and the celts being hebrews was not a connection that was fully well known or acknowledged at that time although it was known it just was not fully prevalent during the times when webster was writing he acknowledges the connections with some words and he actually makes a statement that you cannot just jump to conclusions and say the english was the hebrew because of them <laughs> but he does point some out and he even uses the hebrew to show a whole bunch of word origins himself but back on point here <laughs> it says so it was again wa yahi or way he they say way he but again they've had that like three different times if you've noticed and every time they translated it as something different here's and he was here is and was here is and he was and now you have again so it was they do that so it's not monotonous right to a reader but the wa is a conjunction so and thus anything that can conjoin and then typically an author or a scholar would use the word the conjunction that's most fitting for the context 
So if and was the most fitting, and would be what was used. Although if you wanted to be literal, you could just use and everywhere because that's generally the sense of it. However, in the English language, sometimes it doesn't sound right when you just do that. This is wa yihi or wayhi, and he caused to be, it made it evident and claimed as his own, right? From then on, me'az, right? As is at that time. So me'az is the place of at that time which means from then on. I hope you can see that. So from then on, Hapikid, or Hipkid, he, he made him overseer, atu, ato, with him, of his house, and over all that substance unto him. Okay? Why ye Barak, and he blessed Yahuwah at the house of the Egyptian, on account of that big all, big lol, right? So it's in galal, right? That bet is the prefix meaning in, with, or because of, right? On, they say right here. And that gimel lamed lamed is the word you want to look out. It's gal, galal, and it means on account, because. And then you can see where it's used in different places there. The important thing here, when you think about it, is Gimalamid and Galil. There's different references to places that are similar spellings. In the uh, Renewed Covenant, they have parables. The significance when you think about the parable application, especially when he says that you went to Gilgal and return or roll your way into Yahuwah in the Proverbs, but that's usually translated as commit your way to Yahuwah, but it's Gimalamid. Anyways. Um, Eric Bissell goes into the, what Gimbal Ahmed is quite a bit if you ever look at his older videos there. And he says, And Barak Yahuwah at the house of the Egyptian on account of Yahusuf, and he caused to be the Barakoth or the blessings Yahuwah in all that substance unto him in the house and in the field, right? Wubash Shade, they say. Wubash Shade. When you have the dot in the letter, like you have the dot right here, not this one, this just hardens it at the beginning, but like this dot right here, this dot right here, it's a hardening or a fortifying dogish. They call it the dogish forte. And whenever you see that, it normally will mean that that letter is doubled. That's why when you look up here, it says B-A-S, and then it has S-A. So it doubles the pronunciation. Right here, B-A-B, B-A, right? Same thing. You can find that all over in the Masoretic text with the vowel points. A lot of people will be contentious and argue and say, oh, well, that's not legitimate because it's an added thing. And I don't want to get into the legitimacy of the vowel points themselves because I agree with that. They were added. There's no contention there. But it was added generally to preserve the language. And then the evidence of where it was tampered with, we actually have and know about. So the fact that letters are doubled, though, when you have um, this phenomenon, is still preserved in the English language all over the place just name a word you can double the little middle puddle muddle running right swimming it you can you get it all of the time and that phenomenon that we have in the english with doubling that came right from here so it is a legitimate thing it's not something that was reflected in the spelling of the words but in the pronunciation and later on as time went on, we lost the ability to write the language. We regained the letters, and they added in writing vowels. And that's why you have some letters like the letter hey, which looks like a backwards E, 
became a letter E. And while the E sound is different, its usage in English is very similar to how we would use the hey. But then the letter H is also, on occasion, used like a vowel. If you remember unhand or un uh, air, if it uses an un a n in front of the h as well as other vowels because it originally was one. So those are evidences, the factual things you can't remove from people's mouths that the, of the the facts of how the language has changed over time, and that the English language was a literally literally the Hebrew that was spoken by our ancestors that's just been uh, shifted as time went on and our, our creator allowed. It says, thus he left. azab. sorry. Thus he left or forsook. Okay. All that unto him in the hand of Yahusuf, meaning it's not that he cast it away, but he had no regard for it because of how trustworthy Yahusuf was. That's another thing that's indicative. Uh, a true believer, he will be a steadfast servant in the position of a servant. He'll be a righteous master in the position of a master. He'll be a righteous judge if he's in that position. He will be lowly if he's in such a state. You'll, you'll do the what is true in your life, and you won't complain about it. And that's true for every righteous person throughout the entirety of the, what we'd call the scriptures. Even look at Dawid when he fell into sin. It will get to that, but if you ever want to jump ahead in, um, I believe it starts in 2 Shemuel. But when he falls into error, he doesn't argue and complain, grumble. He acknowledges that he did wrong, falls into the hand of Yahuwah, accepts what happens to him, doesn't complain, turns the other cheek. He does everything that a believer is enjoined to do today in the original covenant times as an example for us to follow. Right? That was the whole point. And then you find that fully elucidated or the very fact that the narratives that were originally given of our patriarchs, the good, bad, and ugly, if you will, the fact that they were written down for us to be admonished and to take hope in, the fact that they were forgiven for the things they did when they turned to do right, and that they weren't perfect and yet still accepted. That's comfort to us who are in a like situation. That is mentioned directly, and that's how that's supposed to be taken in the apostolic constitutions. So you won't find how that is supposed to be comprehended directly said anywhere in what we call the Bible. And because of that, you have a lot of harsh criticisms and opinions of things that come up and out of the mouths of others, irregardless of what's in Scripture. And that's the key. When people speak evil of anyone, they're doing what his word said not to. And it's right there in the Bible to convict them it, when they repent of it, whether now or then. And that's true for everybody. What we're going to be held against, or what's going to be held against us is the things that are demonstrably proven to be in his word that we failed to uphold. Right? Especially when we have it amongst us. But says, and he forsook all which unto him in the hand of Yahusuf, and not walo concerned or he knew literally yada is to know when adam yada his wife he knew him right to know you can see there eth himself but he said he had he did not know eth with anything except for the bread which he ate so he had no concern for all that was in his house because he trusted yahusuf and everything prospered in his hand okay that's the kind of trustworthiness that a real believer can instill in someone, just like Daniel to Nebuchadnezzar. You never heard him curse that king, the man who wanted to throw him or to burn him alive and his friends for not bowing to an idol, right? He never once spoke evil of him. And even when there was a dream showing that he was going to be suffering for what he chose to do in pride, Daniel warned him for his benefit. That's what every believer ought to do. Just like 
Yahu Kanan the Immerser warned Herod that he shouldn't have his sister or his brother's wife for a wife. He, that's the same kind of disposition. <clears throat> it says, and was Yahusuf handsome? Yefe, right? Right? Fair or beautiful? In form and fair or beautiful in appearance or ma'raya from the means of being seen, which is in appearance, right? And it came to pass, or while Yahi, right? Achar, after Hadebarim, or the matters, hala the these, right? That cast the wife of his master at her eyes on or to, toward, if you will, Yahusuf. And she said, being past tense with the Tao there, right? And she said, lie with me. This is to lie down in the way, see, that we will lie with him. And you can look at how this word is used for the context of what it means the daughters of Lot would lie with him, and that's what got them their children, right? So there's no there's no guessing at what that's supposed to mean if you just go by how it's used in Scripture and what it meant there, right, throughout the entirety of the text. <laughs> in this case, it's not explicitly stated word for word, plainly spoken, but the word is used and the narrative states the facts as plain evidence of what happened. But he refused, right, that Ein, but he refused and said to the wife of his master, Hen, behold, my master is not, or he has no concern with me, what's in the house and all that he has unto him, or all his substance unto him. He has committed, or Nathan, given in my hand. And there is no one greater in this house than I. And no, has he kept back from me anything except if you. So, kiaim otka, right? Except for or except on the condition of you. That's the only thing that he's prevented him from having, right? His own wife. Because you are Ishto, right, his wife, then how can I do wickedness? This is the evil, liter excuse me, this is literally the evil, ha ra -a, ha godola. How can I do the evil, the great, this, right? How can I do this great evil, is how it's translated in English, right? But the Hebrew has the verb, and things out of order from what we're familiar with. It's actually backwards, right? How can I do this great evil and sin against Elohim or unto Elohim? And it came to be, while Yehi, as she spoke to Yahusuf the day by day, literally yom yom, right? Walo, and not he did heed. Shema, right? La lo shema, so he'd no hear or do to her to lie with her or to be with her to fall out, come to pass, become, right? Yahi, right? To cause it to exist, literally, with her. And it came to pass about time. Ki hiyam, right? So around or as the day, literally, this, that, so, and it came about as this day that Yahusuf came or went into the house to do his work, all right? While Ein and not a man of the men of the house was there. 
in the house. They say inside, right? That she caught him, right? That she took hold of him, right? By his garment. And that's that be bigadu, right? Be big dal. But remember, bet gimel dalit, it's the second, third, and fourth letter of the aleph bet there. But it means garment. It's also to deceive and be and to camouflage. It's where we get the in English the word for baggy, like baggy clothing. It's a garment that is concealing, if you will. <clears throat> He said, then she caught him by his garment, saying, lie with me. But he left his garment, all right, in her hand and fled. To flee and escape from the wiles of lusts and the things that can come from that is also seen as a meritorious thing in what is called the recognitions of Clement. When you get through that, you'll hear about the story of Clement's family and how his wife, or not his wife, I'm sorry, his mother had left because of um, an incestuous relationship that she didn't want to have with her husband's brother <clears throat> and having adultery and dishonor amongst the family there. But it says, and he fled and ran outside. And so it was, or and it came to be when she saw that he had left his garment in her hand and fled outside, that she called, we take hurrah, that's to, to cry out, right? But that she called to the men of the house that Sarah, the two dots there with the yod, remember it means, and it's unto the men of, to the men, and then they have of the house right here. But that Sarah Yod always denotes the of of something in the um, vowel points. It says, and she, she called to the men of her house and spoke to them saying, look or look him. The coming, it's literally he's brought in, but it says the coming unto us, a man of the Hebrews unto to mock. It says to mock literally right there, but that lamed is to, and then this word is quite like Yitzach, where we get Isaac. Remember, it means joyous laughter, but it also means to mock, to laugh. While they laughed when he didn't, when Yahushua foretold to Abram and Sarah that they would have a child in their old age, and so he was called Yitzach, it was also... Uh, Yishmael, who mocked Yitzach at his weaning, which was the same word there, the Zach right here. <clears throat> but the Saxons, the sons of Yitzach, both esteemed through history for their, you know, their prowess and the things they did, he, they also made a mockery of in their willing disobedience and the things that have happened. So he mocks those who mock him, it says. And that's that word in how it's used. Just for context there. But it says, And he has brought a man of the Hebrews to mock us. And he came to me to lie with me. And I cried out in a voice. It says, with voice, right? Loud, gadol, great. So with a great voice. And it came to pass when he heard that I lifted up my voice and cried out that he left his garment with me and fled and went outside. So she kept his garment with her until, right, until the time Ed, right, came or his master to come home, right? When the time came to his master to his home. And she spoke, or that's the word for debar, word, matter, or thing again, right? And she spoke to him with words, or the matters. The... the cough being like, with, as, resembling, right? So it says, with words like these. Saying... 
came in to me your servant or the servant the hebrew whom you bought or whom you brought to us to mock me so it came to pass as i lifted my voice and cried out that he left his garment with me and fled outside sorry about that why ye he and it came to be when Shema, right, when he heard his master at the words of his wife, which she spoke, Deborah, right, Deborah, that's like the word Deborah. Deborah is also the word for a, a female or a worker bee, I believe. But it says, and she spoke to him, saying, Ka Deborah, or Ka Deborim, after this did to me, it says the manner, right? We have the uh, the saying in when you do a magic trick, right, or whatever, they say abracadabra. That's actually from the Hebrew where you go abara, as I speak, kadabara. So it is, right? And that's related to right here, kadabar, right? So that's the manner, as the thing is, after this did to me your servant, right? That doesn't sound quite right in English, but again, if you put it correctly, how, how it would sound, it would be, so when he had heard this, the words of his master, she said to him, um, that she spoke to him saying that he did like manner to me, Right? and your servant, and his wrath was kindled. And he took, that same word right there, right, and took the master Yahusuf at him, and put him into, or to, the house of imprisonment, Hasohar. Literally, perhaps it says roundness there, from Sahar. It means roundness but they have it as prison everywhere that it's translated. And they say it's from the same as kahar, a dungeon, surrounded by walls or a prison. And back then it would have been maybe round because it was an empty or a non-used well that never filled with water. But anyways. <clears throat> and he says he took his master, Yahusuf, and put him into the house of imprisonment, a place right literally the means of standing or the the place of standing where prisoners of the king were confined to literally the bound ones of the king were bound is literally what it's saying and it came to be there in the prison or then he came to be or and he was there in the prison but was yahuwah or but and it came to be again yahuwah at yahusuf he was with yahusuf and showed him chesed mercy that's that loving kindness as we put it the unmerited tender loving kindness is how i'd had it translated at one point all over the place but that's kind of long uh, dr bill barrick the gentleman who teaches the 501 Hebrew or the 503 Hebrew grammar class on the Master Seminary YouTube channel. He says that he translates it as covenant love, just for that. But it says he showed him chesed, mercy, and he gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the house of imprisonment. And committed and gave to him that Nathan, right, the keeper or the prince of the house of imprisonment, in the hand of Yahusuf, eth all the prisoners who were in the house of the prison, and all that which they did there, it was his doing, meaning that he, he prospered things where he was there too, and they gave it into his hand without concern, right? Not the keeper of the prison concerned himself, right? He he didn't even look at it. He didn't even look to f all the things in his hand, because Yahuwah was with him, and whatever he did, Yahuwah made it prosper. 
All right. And that is a great thing for us. When we get to the Testament, you'll even see how much like our Mashiach, he foreshadowed things in his life and then the benefits that he received from him in those. Just one moment. All right. Uh, just one chapter, but it seems that that was sufficient for us, for our fellowship. We had quite a bit we were doing beforehand. So we're going to go ahead and wrap that up for today, and then we will continue, Ab willing, Father willing, next week with chapter 40 here and what happens with Yahusuf in prison while he is able to interpret the dreams that first benefit the carnal-minded in the immediate and later comes back to benefit him. Something to keep in mind that we might not always have the benefit or the reward of our well-doing right away. Another witness to that, a great example for that would be Job, and it would be Tobiyahu, where you see him suffering calamities of no fault of his own, but later benefiting. Both of them examples of sufferings like gold, where they're not doing wrong of themselves at the time that they're being purified, Unlike being purified like silver, which is generally of a lesser stature in its preciousness and in its quality of purification and for the reasons. But gold isn't doing wrong and suffering. The silver, you're suffering for the things you're doing and only so long as you're continuing in it until you're pulled out of that fire. So something to keep in mind. But anyways, you all have a wonderful rest of your Shabbat, a great week ahead, Shavuot Tov, and we will see you next time. Thank you.